Hi everyone, welcome back to another week with me, your world traveler. Just kidding, I'm at home still and stuck, so i um, very desperate about that. And that's why I was thinking about what place I want to talk about today with you. And then I saw a poster on my wall, which you can't see now, but it shows one of the first very influential places for me, and it is San Francisco. So that's why I want to share with you how it became so important to me and what you can do there. But first, some basic facts about the city. So San Francisco is located in the north of California, although there's much more north of California coming, so it's really more northern central of California. In the city itself, there are about 800 in 80,000 people living, but in the, in the metropolitan area, even 4.7 million. So it's it's quite a big area um, for a lot of people. And um, one thing that is very special about the city is the climate or the weather, because um, the city is located in the Mediterranean zone. So you would expect warm summers and, you know, just Mediterranean climate. Um, but because of the cold winds from the north, Summers are really not that warm though. Um, they are quite nice and enjoyable and the warmest sun, uh, the warmest months in the year are September and October, which is also quite unusual for that zone. And um, yeah, speaking of experience, I went there in September and yes, it was warm. It was a nice temperature, but it was really not that hot. But make sure to put enough sunscreen because the sun is still brutal. I got serious sunburn on like my hands from um, a bike tour and I didn't, I totally underestimated the sun. So really be aware of that and always pack a few layers. That is something that I learned in San Francisco that people always have at least one jumper and a windbreaker with them because you never know because the like the weather changes within minutes and you can't even expect it. And these are the top things you should definitely do when visiting San Francisco. And the first one is visit Chinatown because um, yeah, Chinatown is one of the most popular sites in San Francisco and it is actually the biggest community of Chinese people outside of the country of China with over 100,000 people living within that district. The main entrance to the district is the Dragon Gate which is a site itself because it's very very cool design very architecture wise very exciting and in Chinatown you can get authentic Chinese food a look at Chinese inspired buildings and definitely shop for some unique souvenirs the district though is quite touristy so of course a lot of shops and restaurants adapted to um, what tourists want so if you want a real or more authentic way of Chinatown, try to go to Stockton Street because there it's a little bit more quiet and a little bit more authentic. Number two of our list is to go to the Golden Gate Park and maybe spend even a whole day there because the Golden Gate Park is one of the biggest inner city parks worldwide. It is even bigger than Central Park in New York City. And that's because of the size, that's why there's so many things to do. You can, you know, see and experience so many different things. And yeah, I just brought some of the top things that I really enjoyed while I was spending a day there. The first one is the Conservatory of Flowers, a Victorian era designed conservatory with so many interesting plants and yeah very very unusual and very very interesting next one would be the san francisco botanical garden it goes into the same direction but it is even bigger more plants more everything very very nice and obviously there are countless picnic areas for a very nice lunch or afternoon maybe wine or beer whatever you like and also uh, what is located in the golden gate park is the california academy of science so also very interesting the air in the park was so surprising to me because San Francisco itself is quite fresh when it comes to, you know, climate and weather. But in, in the Golden Gate Park, the air just felt crisp and really fresh and clean. So, you know, try to breathe up as much as you can. And especially in the Golden Gate Park, you can really experience the weather changes. And that's also where I got my sunburn. So, yeah. Just try to spend there 
as long as you can. So the third and last thing on our list today is gaze at the street art in the Mission District. Um, yeah, the street art culture in Mission District started in the 1970s as a protest against the foreign policy against um, Southern American countries. And that's why a lot of art pieces are inspired by Mexican illustrations of Mayan women, Aztec warriors and Native American people. Clarion Alley is the heart of everything and the district, so make sure to go there. And you can even find murals and street art from the famous artist Banksy. So go look and maybe you can find and search it. And definitely while you wander through the streets, make sure to get some delicious street food from all of these street food vendors all across the district. And yeah, whatever you take, you will definitely be satisfied. San Francisco was the first step of a new way of traveling for me because it was the first time that I really immersed myself more into the culture. I went more off the beaten paths and definitely talked to more people living there to really understand or try to understand the city even more. So maybe that can happen to you too if you went there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to go to San Francisco, and you're still looking for travel buddies because you don't want to go alone, make sure to put your trip plans on our Draw My Trip platform. There will be many people interested in a trip to San Francisco. I'm, I'm very sure of it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications for this show so you won't miss out on my next shows. And yeah, have a great weekend and see you next week.